I wanted to do a quick video tutorial on something I've been trying to figure out for a while in machine learning uh, and hadn't been able to until uh, just a couple of days ago when I watched a great coding train video by Daniel Schiffman on, on this technique. So what we're going to be doing is using StyleGand to uh, render new images based on images that are similar. So these will be synthetic images based on a real image. And the way that StyleGAN does that is it gives us access to that latent space. So I'll just show you a quick example of that. These are landscapes, uh, kind of fictional landscapes based on real trained images from the machine learning model that are just uh, smoothly transitioning from one to another. And I had, I had been stuck trying to figure out how to do that. I could generate the images, but then creating that sort of smooth uh, transition between them always eluded me, and I had seen it online a lot. The tools we're going to be using first is uh, we're going to be using Runway ML. Uh, you can go to their website here. Uh, this is a really nice uh, software you can download to your computer that makes um, doing things with machine learning, particularly visual things with machine learning, very easy. It's in beta. It's super powerful, um, super great software to play around with, and there's a ton of stuff it can do. So, in uh, the coding train videos. Uh, I'll put a link to this, but uh, Daniel Schiffman goes through a bunch of those things that you can do with Runway. And uh, as of right now, when I'm recording this, it's sort of unedited, so there's, you know, it's a good three hours of video to, you have to get through to um, get to the effect that uh, we're sort of looking to replicate. Um, and, and it doesn't actually teach you how to do this, but it, it does sort of touch on it. And from this video, you can get a, a good sense of how to use Runway. I'll post some code that I use to make this happen. Um, so anyway, you'll need to download Runway, uh, and then once you have it up and running, uh, this is a, a, a beta app, so uh, there may be some issues. I was actually just having some issues uh, getting this model loaded, but um, you'll come to a screen like this, and you'll see StyleGAN is one of the models that you can choose from. Uh, there's a ton of great stuff to play around with, but uh, we're going to look at StyleGAN. And um, we're just going to add it to a new workspace. And I'll just let it give me the default name there. Um, and it wants an input source. So we're going to say vector. And then um, we're going to be generating landscapes. So um, our, for our checkpoint area here, we're going to choose landscapes. Um, there's some other parameters we can set. I'm just going to leave them at their defaults, and I could talk about them later. Um, and then uh, as our output, we just want to preview this. Um, now, to see anything in this grid of images here, um, you need to uh, run a remote server. Um, when you install Runway, you'll get a kind of primer on that, but uh, it requires Docker uh, to load the container and a little bit of time to start up. Um, you can see I've got some uh, available space here. When you first uh, get on Runway, you, you get a little quota of, of processing time uh, allotted to you, and, and so you can run this example and it doesn't cost you anything. So uh, the model is now running. Uh, you can see down here, the option is to stop it. Um, and we're looking at vectors of a landscape. These are going to be kind of random, and we can scrub through them and, and uh, load different images. And you can see these are just these synthetic images. This one's of a waterfall. Um, we could play with the truncation and neighbor similarity settings uh, in order to generate more or less realistic uh, looking landscapes with this slider here and um, more or less similar uh, neighbors uh, with this slider here. Uh, I'm just going to leave things as is. Now, uh, so what we get out of this if we were to just choose one of these images and export it so if I look at my desktop, uh, you get this uh, JSON file. And if I were to open that up, it's just this big array of numbers between negative 1 and 1. Um, so what these represent is, uh, is the vector that generates this image. So if we were to pass these same numbers every time through the StyleGAN model, we'll get that image. If we manipulate even one of these numbers, we'll get a slightly different image. And um, so what we're going to be doing is generating new kind of random arrays uh, with the same shape each time. 
So uh, this is going to be what's going to be what we're going to start with. We're going to start with this array, uh, and then we're going to uh, generate new ones sort of on the fly. And the way we're going to do that is with uh, processing in P5, the, uh, the web version of processing. Uh, so if you watch the coding train video, I'll show you how to uh, generate these fake rainbow sequences. And um, this would just kind of give you a primer uh, for kind of how runway works. It's a little better in-depth look at, at how this is all set up. And uh, in that video, he'll link to this um, sketch where he gives you the code for how to make this happen. He doesn't actually go through how to make the animations happen, but I did find a, another sketch of his where um, there's some code to, to do that. It didn't work for me straight out of out of the browser. Uh, I had to edit it a little bit, so I'm going to give you the um, final code repo. Um, and I've got that posted here. Um, I'll include a link, but you basically want to just download this code repo, uh, and we'll be running that. Um, so anyway, uh, back to Runway. What we're going to want to do is um, click on this Network tab here, and uh, we're going to start uh, network where we generate these images. You can see it operates on localhost 8000. That's the web address that uh, the server runs on for StyleGAN. And then if we want to request images from it, uh, it uses, we're going to be creating this post request to localhost 8000 slash queries. Back into our code, um, you're going to get a few things. You're going to get uh, an index file, um, a JavaScript file, and then um, all the libraries that we're using. So we're going to use pro uh, P5, as I mentioned. P5 DOM is what allows us to manipulate the canvas, the thing that renders out the images, and save them to our hard drive. And then Toxic Libs is uh, a library that I included to create that sort of randomness that we want between images. And then uh, in this data folder, this is just, remember that big array we saw? I'm just creating a JavaScript file that assigns a variable to that array, and that's just going to be our starting image that we're going to manipulate to transition from one scene to another. Okay, so another nice thing about Runway is that as far as this output, you have a lot of options for different ways to output different models. For StyleGAN in particular, your export can be text, so like JSON file. It could be an image directory if you want to save out an image sequence, or in our case, we want to save out a video. Uh, so I've just selected video here, selected my format. I've got a directory where I want to save it, and this frame rate of five, we'll try it out. I'm not sure how this will work, and we've got our model running. And now I'm going to drag my index file into a browser. And in Runway, I'll click Export. And you can see it's cycling through these images. So it's just taking what's in my browser here. And it's generating images. And up here in the HTTP request, you can see that Z variable changing as it animates through that latent space, as it gets new random latent space Z variables. So let's stop it there, and we'll stop our runway model. And now, if I look at what it saved out, we've got our style game video here. You can see we've got an animated video. And I have noticed this is a little bit more, I'm not sure if there's a quality setting, but it's a little bit more pixelated than if we were to just save out the raw images and then kind of stitch them together with a program like After Effects, but pretty good. That's the gist of it. Um, that's how you create one of these animated videos. And uh, so now I'm just going to walk through the code in a little bit of detail, uh, if that's helpful to someone. Otherwise, uh, just look at the links for all the um, places to download Runway, P5, my code repo, etc. So um, in that custom code, uh, this is a variable for the image that we're creating. Um, N is going to represent are that big array of negative one to one uh, number values, float values, and I'm setting a variable for our image size here. Theoretically, you wouldn't have to do 512. If, if there's other models that you're using with StyleGAN that would um, allow you to output a larger image, great, just modify it here. Um, now, there's some of this code, I, I gotta be honest, I 
don't understand quite what's happening so <laughs> if anyone wants to fill me in that's great um partially it's this angle count value i, I roughly understand what's going on there but um so i'll do my best to explain it but <laughs> bear with me um all right so we're creating this canvas and um then for each of the pixels in this canvas we're we're, we're populating this n array this, this new image array um with uh, random number values through this noise loop uh, function and the parameters that we pass to the noise loop function are um, a, a diameter and and that's one of the things I think that deals with the randomness uh, the amount of randomness we can tolerate so uh, maybe by playing around with those values making them greater or smaller um, we might get a more similar or more random image I'm not sure you'll uh, if anyone tests that out that'd be awesome to know and then um, our range sort of a negative one to one uh, ratio um, and so once we have that random value we call this generate image function um, so here's that path that runway uses to make to handle post requests and then um, again for each of the pixels in our new image let's assign it a value um, based on the the random uh, noise that we got from noise loop function. Um, so I, part of what I'm confused by is I'm not sure why they're using pi. It seems like they're going through um, the array of values in a, in a radial fashion versus like a line by line fashion. Um, I, I noticed that 24 times 60 is equals 1440 and that um, this through this count here where they're saving the image uh, it's executing every four times so maybe it has something to do with that like we're just saving our values um, every multiple of four until we hit a sort of 360 degree pass through of our pixel values um, you'll recognize this truncation variable um, from runway uh, this allows us to determine the level of randomness um, and z in in a lot of machine learning models is represents that latent space um, that vector array representation of our image um, so that's where all the sort of transition between images is allowed to happen um, once we have all this information we create that post request to our local host 8000 query passing it the data and saying uh, if we get it if it's successful call this got image function if it fails this got error function so if it fails we're just going to log out um, what the error was but it's not going to fail so uh, in our success function got image um, we assign that variable we set up way up at the top the output image to this processing p5 create image function and uh, we're hiding the image on screen because we're generating on the canvas uh, the same image because that's the one that we're going to be allowed to save so uh, after this create image function is successful again we have this uh, image ready callback and that says hey create the canvas image save it give it this name um, and this nf is a is a function within p5 that turns sort of a number into a string so and then we're just incrementing our counter so that we're progressing through all the pixels of the image so as long as the angle is less than 2 pi we call generate image you notice it's inside that set timeout uh, that's just to give the image time to save out 100 milliseconds and then down here you see the class for this noise loop uh, this is just that randomness that we need uh, to go from scene to scene uh, and this is where I've used toxic libs. Um, so you can see uh, this R value here is uh, toxic libs simplex noise function. And it just takes an X and Y offset and uh, it's sort of mapped to a, ma uh, a maximum of negative one or a minimum of negative one, a maximum of one um, with that uh, parameter of, of 20 degrees of sort of like difference. That's my. <laughs> best non-scientific uh, explanation of it so anyway that's uh that's kind of all there is to the code if you have any questions if you have any um cool things that you make with this uh if i've totally bungled something definitely let me know